Hey, welcome to the Soul Gym. I'm Crystal. And I'm Jody. Hey, we are so happy you have joined us in the Soul Gym this week. What we're going to talk about this week are prison mindsets. And we are here to tell you that there's freedom, that there is freedom. And so we're going to talk about three specific prison mindsets that can just have, have us chained. First one is toxicity. Then we're going to talk about scarcity. And then we're going to talk about what's happening in this country and it's tyranny. And we're here to tell you that there is freedom. freedom. Huh? What do you got, Jody? Freedom. freedom. Well, I got some scripture here. In John 8, 32 says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Amen. And you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So in the beginning, it says, if you continue in my word, that means as you are walking with God in the word of God, you're growing, yeah. you're changing your, your, your life should look a little different than it did 10 years ago. Okay. You're getting freer. If you're not continuing in the word, you're not going to see the truth. You're going right. to live in darkness. So as you continue in the word fellowshipping with God, he begins to show you the, the areas where you are being held captive. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not in the word, if we're not growing, if we're not changing captivity becomes normal oh. slavery becomes normal uh putting up with stuff you shouldn't be putting up with becomes normal so as you continue growing in god's word renewing your mind mm -hmm. that that truth begins to enlighten you and you you begin to go wow there's better there's more right well I, we're talking about this prison mindset but let me open with you know, when someone commits a crime and is sentenced to prison, uh, they're, they're in this highly controlled environment. They have no say, you know, what to eat, when to go to bed, um, lack privacy. Pretty soon, you know, they, they, they be, their thinking becomes that. Yeah. And, and that's what begins to happen to us. Like you said, if we don't take inventory, we got to start thinking about what we're thinking about. Or mm -hmm. pretty soon, this prison mindset is normal. And we're here to say it's not normal. So I've been at um, the Southwest Believers Convention much of the week. And every single one of the, the speakers is saying, we are supposed to be growing in faith daily. Mm. When we are growing in faith daily you were just saying this is a growth mindset we're, we're here to talk about three specific mindsets the first one being this toxic relationship type of mindset meaning we have people in our life it could be it could be a spouse it could be an ex-spouse it could be a, a parent it could be a friend it could be a, a co-worker it could be any relationship in your life that is toxic. And I know we, we were just saying that word gets thrown around a lot, but toxic means extremely harsh, malicious, harmful. We're talking about relationships. We're talking about people in our life that are, are harmful. Mm -hmm. And so Creflo Dollar even brought this up. If, if we've got people in our life, he said, Toxic relationships are designed to get you to devalue yourself. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's man. It. Uh -huh. And so you, you begin to question <clears throat> as this person is controlling or whatever they're doing. Jody, you were talking about someone specific in your life that. Mm -hmm. got yeah. Uh, I was listening to Joyce Myers yesterday and she was talking about being free and it's a fight. Yeah. You know, because we have relationships and we have people in our lives. I know I have that are supposed to be there, you know, a friend, uh, a relative, you know, someone who you feel completely obligated to keep there because of who they are. 
the example I used with Crystal earlier was there is a person in my life recently, and I will not mention names, but I knew it was bad. I knew it was really bad, but I was supposed to keep this person in my life. And so here's an example of a situation that occurred. This person did something really awful where it was so bad, the police should have been called in the situation, but they weren't. And so after years and years and years of putting up with this, I finally said, that's it. I'm done. This is over. You will not have access to me or my children anymore. And so here's the thing. When people realize they're losing control over you, when you go, I'm done, they panic. Yeah. And if they're controlling, they will come after you. They will come after you. They will come after you. And they won't relent because they're so used to having control. And so what this person did, realized, we're done. They come into my driveway slash yard with their car and just start laying on the horn early in the morning eh, 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 because no one will answer this person's call and so no regard for anyone sleeping no regard for the neighbors this person is telling everyone you are going to come talk to me so thankfully i was gone <laughs> <laughs> God saved me, but one of my children went out, and this is the example. Now, it, it, there are extremes. This is really extreme, but because of the obligation I felt to keep this person around, I, I, those type of people will take their liberty to do whatever they want to do to you, to control you to get you to do what they want you to do. And until you go, I am not answering your phone call. In fact, I blocked this person's phone number. I'm not answering your text. I'm not answering the door. And I know that is really difficult for a lot of people because it's so-and-so it's, you know, and, but I said, in order for me to not feel bad anymore. And th this is the thing when you're growing, when you're changing, when all you want for your life and your family is to go higher and to be better and to grow, you realize that I have to cut this stuff out because each time I go back there, I feel bad. Right. And it takes me a long time to get rid of all these icky thoughts and feelings. So as now you're growing, that's going, a sign. that's what you're saying. Yes, it's a sign. That's a sign. that that's is the sign. Exactly. Yeah, that when people, there's this pressure, there's this anxiety you get when you're around them. Don't be around them. Exactly. Thought they need to go. Right. Because you can only afford to be around people in a relationship. I know we're going to be around toxic people all the time but when you're connected to someone and spending regular time with them you can only afford to be around people who want you to go higher mm -hmm. and that that speak life into you and you've got to release the ones who make you feel like crap right well we were saying how do you go about doing that mm. it's only through personal growth mm -hmm. like you said I mean, when you begin to value yourself, this, I mean, this, this person or this toxic relationship is all about devaluing, controlling, what, whatever it is. When you begin to renew your mind and see who you really are in Christ, man, it, it, it gets easier and easier to get these people out of your life. You mm -hmm. gotta get these you got to detach, you got to unchain yourself from, you know, these past memories, these, these people, but I'm telling you, these toxic relationships, you want freedom in your life, you got to cut that one off. Mm -hmm. You, you got to get rid of these toxic relationships. And you know, it's not just toxic. Yeah. There are people who want you to remain the same. 
They, they don't have to be abusing you. Right. They don't have to be, you know, mistreating you, but they don't want you to grow, you know, and once they, you know, they're used to their dance with you. They're used to you guys going to the same places and hanging out and talking about the same thing. But once you start wanting more, you know, you want better. Let's say fitness, for example. Say you are around friends who aren't in the greatest of shape and you guys like to eat out and you guys like to eat out a lot and you guys talk about, you, you know, your, your recipes and, and food tends to be the center of attention. And then you decide, I'm going to get in shape. You know, this isn't the best road for me. And you tell all your friends, guess what, you guys? I joined the gym. I, I'm going to exercise. <laughs> Not everyone's going to celebrate. No. Not everyone's going to go, good for you. Because what it does is it challenges, you know, their status quo. It, it it sheds a light on, oh, you know, I know I should have been doing this, but I'm not, you know, I haven't done it yet. So th there, there's extremes of groups of people you're in, your yeah. friends, your family, your coworkers, your people at church that don't want you to come out of their comfortable little circle. Mm -hmm. So even those people who are not toxic, Right. But Lord forbid you start challenging what we do here. Uh, I'm not going to like it. So those people sad to say you have to remove too. And sadly, they're oftentimes your friends and family, your they closest are. friends and family. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. When you're trying to lose weight and they bring you over a chocolate cake, you know, <laughs> yep. That's that's what you got to be prepared for. So yeah, yep. not not everybody's going to be uh, excited for you. So it, yeah, it's not just toxic relationships. Yeah, there there are toxic relationships, and then there are just those relationships that are are a drain. Yes, you know, like you said, where they're not happy for your success, and mm -hmm. so you you might want to minimize your time with those people as well. So there there's there's one a prison mindset that we're talking about. And that is uh, any relationship that is not helping you get better. You may want to limit your time or, or, you know, get rid of that person altogether. Yep. The second mindset, this prison mindset that we're talking about is money is you can call it a scarcity mentality. You can call it a poverty mentality but it is, it, it typically, you know, we, we learn a scarcity mentality. We learn it in childhood. It's those things that your, your parents might have said, like money doesn't grow on trees, you know, that would there, but it's, it's always about obsessing that there isn't going to be enough. Um, it's that constant price checking. You know, where you, you even feel bad about buying anything that isn't a, a necessity. But I'm telling you, money, um, money can be a prison. Debt is absolutely a prison. And so it's to get out of this scarcity mindset and into an abundance mindset. So what do you think there, Joe? Yeah, I, yeah, the fear of not having it. Yeah. And then the love of it. True. <laughs> God says the love of money. Yes. The root of all evil. Uh, remember the story of the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, you know, I, I've done everything, you know, that that's been required of me. And Jesus said, you do well, but there's one thing you lack. I mean, imagine that one thing you lack, sell what you have and give to the poor. And the rich young ruler turned away and was sad. See, scarcity and following money. I mean, when our decisions are based on money, 
rather than the spirit of God leading us. Yeah. We take a job according to how much money we're going to get. I mean, people will move across the country, move across the world because they're getting a five dollar raise. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's got to be about being led and what you're supposed to do with your life. But but the sad thing is, is people make most of their decisions on show me the money, show me the money, show me the money. And if you look, you know, I always, whenever there's problems, and I've been sharing this with my kids, you know, when there's problems in an organization with groups of people at work, um, in the family, it, it's like nine times out of 10, I say, go where the money's at. You know, if you can't understand why most people do what they do, how can they do that? Look at what the politicians are doing right yeah. now. Look at the, the pharmacies. Look at this vaccine craze. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's just pure insanity. And I always say, follow the money. Follow the money. That explains why most people do what they do mm -hmm. is their, their absolute lust and love for money wow. and it's it's scary it is the root of all evil it is yeah not, not money but the love of it the mm -hmm. things that people will do to get their hands on money and oh. the cure to that is to become a giver amen it, it, it's to release it you've got to become you know a, a giver uh you got to open yourself up and and desire to give your life away rather than hoard it. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's when you love money, all it is is more, 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 more. But right. when you're the rich young ruler, I mean, he had it all, but he was not going to let go of that money. So, mm -hmm. and, and part of the scarcity thinking too is, is like people will stay in a job they hate, you know, it, as opposed to, take a risk you know like yeah. you said they'll they'll all all for, for money for money you know, i'm just like no way and so people will live their life completely unfulfilled like you're saying for an extra dollar yeah like, no, no way yeah, yeah you know at this believers convention every single one of these you know people who are speaking have said you know in 45 years you know, they've, they've never been shorted. They've always had enough. I, um, I remember, I think it was Terry Pearson's was saying, you know, back a number of years ago where it, it looked like they should make cuts and, you know, when the pressure's on and, and she was like, we did just the opposite. We, we gave and we gave more and we gave, and completely turned the whole financial situation mm -hmm. around. I mean, you're so right. You want to get yourself out of debt, start to give. Yep. Look at what God does. Everything, you know, love your enemies. It, yeah. Everything he tells you to do, is it, it appears in, in a worldly system to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're in debt, find a place to sow some seed you know, yep. in good soil. And that is how you, you get yourself out of that prison of, of that money, you know, love of money or that, that scarcity mentality. And so absolutely you start giving yourself out of that prison mentality. Third thing, and it just, it is so what's happening right now Ooh. is tyranny, tyranny. It is tyranny what is happening, that we are, we are imprisoned by our own government. I mean, Jody, right there in Las Vegas, I mean, you are walking the walk right now with these <laughs> mask mandates back on. And I mean, vaccine passports, are, are you kidding me? I mean, look at what New York has done. And people are just falling for this stuff. Mm -hmm. because, I mean, fear, what if you want to be, this is, you're trapped, our government is trapping people with fear, mm -hmm. nonstop, 24 hours a day, you're going to die, you're going to die, yeah. you're going to die, it's just, it's absolute tyranny what is happening yeah. right now. 
Well, like, I think it was Lance Walno on Flashpoint said, when bad things start happening, uh, we tend to go to a leader, you know, help me, what do yeah. I do? And again, you know, we're talking about living authentically, uh, living out of your spirit, what God is telling you to do, shutting out all voices. This is a time where if you're looking to your government to save you, oh, you're in trouble. Yeah. I, I mean, because people are that, you know, they, they think the world's falling apart. COVID, COVID, which, which absolutely is so bizarre because how many other things are people dying of? I know. People are dying of car accidents. They're dying from falling. They're drowning. Heart they're disease. Cancer. Cancer. I, there, there are a million things people are dying of, but this is the only thing that we're talking about I know. that has a 99% survival rate. Exactly. And we've got everyone shut down, masked up, a vaccine passport for something that has a 99% I know. And are people dying? Of course, people are dying from a million other things. Right. But, but that none of that seems to matter. This is the only thing that seems to matter. And I'm telling you, if you're not fighting back, right. and again, I'm asking myself, you know, I can sit and scream and hoop and holler about how, how stupid this is, but I, I'm resisting. You know, here in Nevada, they, they've said mask up. And you know what I said? No, stick <laughs> it. So That's right. I'm going. I'm going everywhere, and I don't have a mask on. And am I getting called on it? You better believe I am. But see, this is the thing: when you stand up and make your own decisions, you've got to be willing to face the backlash. That's right. There are. See, we all want to fit in. We all want peace. We all want. Guess what? Those days, I think, are over. I until know. We get through this disaster. I know. And we as Christians are called to fight. That's right. And we've got to stand up. And I think people are still thinking this is a Republican issue. This is a Democrat issue. No, it is good versus evil. And we have to choose which. There's no middle anymore. Right. No. There's no middle. You have to decide, am I going to follow the government? And, and what they want, or am I going to get on God's side, which said, when it goes against me, right. you better stand up for truth and what I want. So, I mean, when, I mean, when you can shut down churches, oh, give me a break. Ooh, I know. I that. mean, I, and, and again, if, if this happens again, pastors, I mean, do, do not do it. We, we need you. We I know. need to be open. We need to gather together. I'm watching Flashpoint last night. And yeah, I think, yeah, it was last night. And I mean, that David Harris, I mean, kicked off of American Airlines and he is flat out saying, you know, stand up. Don't give in. You guys, yeah. this, is, this is all about the election again. Yes. This, this, is, this is absolute tyranny. And yep. this, this video will probably be, you know, kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> we don't care. Uh -uh. I mean, this is wrong. I mean, Jody, you were chased down in your own gym. You, uh -huh. you pay for this membership. And, and they're going to ostracize. I mean, it's, it's such bad business alone. I, I know it, it. It's so stupid. I know. But if everyone complies which I walked in without a mask and every person in there had a mask on and they were, they were trying to force me to wear a mask. And I absolutely refused. And I, I was thinking the same thing. If everyone in here would yes. take their mask no, right. they couldn't do it anymore. Uh -uh. And I, I'm just looking around going, it's sad to say, I'm going, where are the men? Where are the real men in this country? I mean, there was a, firefighter standing there having a mask on and i know people have a million opinions this is mine right there's a firefighter standing there with a the mask watching this whole thing them harassing me them trying to force me with a mask and i was thinking you go into burning buildings for a living you, you go into the most dangerous situations and don't think a thing of it and you 
<laughs> are wearing a mask. I know. Someone's forcing you to not breathe. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I don't either. I don't. And this was a six foot four giant man. Mm -hmm. No, you guys, this is absolute tyranny. And we have to stand up. A, a couple of things. The problem is we don't know our rights. Yes. People don't know the Constitution. I mean, people are listening to the CDC, you know, basically acting like they, they can make law. Yeah. If I recall, I believe that is Congress's job. Yes. To, to make law. These are suggestions, people. And all of a sudden, this mandate. I mean, no, it's not. It is a suggestion. And, and we, we don't know our rights. We don't know what the Constitution says. Just a, a couple of things that Jody and I are, are suggesting. Start watching Flashpoint. Yes. Start watching Flashpoint and Victory News. Those two programs alone, and you're going to learn all about your rights. You're going to understand what God is saying about all of this. I mean, j just start to follow these two programs. See, see them on Rumble, or I, they're probably kicked off YouTube too. But, <laughs> I think they but, are. Yeah, but Flashpoint on, on Victory Channel, govictory.com. I'm telling you, I mean, you want to hear facts and, and the, about the news, but in the spirit of faith, it is absolutely, it's, it's been life-changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really has. And so we, we're suggesting that, man, check these programs out. They're absolutely fantastic. And, and arm yourself. <laughs> arm yourself. Yep. You know, I mean, there's a reason why they're always, you know, after the Second Amendment, always after our guns. Because if we don't have guns, now it, it will be 100% government tyranny. Yep. So stand up arm yourself and know your rights don't comply don't comply absolutely yep. do not comply and so hey at, at the, the soul gym this week we are talking about three prison mindsets or mentality and that's in relationships with money and sadly we never thought it would come that that there would be tyranny in our own government. Yes, this is a fight against good and evil. And yes. guess what? We win. We Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> and and what, what's the scripture? If, this, when this, if the sun sets you free, you are yep. free indeed. Know the truth and it will set you free. That's what we're all about. I mean, yeah, some of this is our opinion, much of it is scripture. You can, you can go and find all kinds of studies on what we're talking about. But there, I mean, the, the land of the free. That's I mean, right. We, our constitution. I mean, uh, we life, liberty, and the pursuit mm -hmm. of happiness. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, all of this has been given to us by God, not the government. See, you just got to ask yourself. If it's putting me in bondage, right. if, it, it's, if it's keeping me down, if it's keeping me oppressed, that's the devil. That's it, right. it, if you're being shut up, being shut in, you know, kept quiet, God doesn't do that. No. The, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You are now free, free. to live. I mean, we're more free. We, we don't even realize what's available to us. Right. I mean, the liberty that Jesus came to die for, free from sickness and disease, free from poverty, free from depression, free from oppression, free from a tyrannical government. So if it is locking you in, keeping you, you know, quiet, oppressed, it, it's not God. It's, it's lies. Amen. So as you're getting free, the truth sets you free. That is God. That's what he wants for your life in That's relationships, right. money, and your government. That's right. Absolutely. So you're free. Just free start up. to take what's yours. Yes. You take what is yours. Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> you guys, 
thank you so much for being a part of the Soul Gym. Um, continue to tell your friends and share our videos and podcast. Um, we will oh, with, uh, make sure you go to souljimsisters.com. I've been changing some things up on there. And, and you know what? We want to hear from you. I mean, if you need anything, if you need prayer, if you have suggestions for a topic, anything you want us to cover, you always go to um, Teachable and check out our course. Uh, it, you want freedom. That, that course will help set yeah. you free. That is for sure. And so we just want to say thank you so much for being a part of the Soul Gym. We will catch you next week where we continue to train up your mind so you can transform your life. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.